welcome to the program. I'm Lana Kay, and we have with us today one of my favorite guests. She's almost a co-anchor here with me. She's with us so much, but that's because she keeps writing these informative, timely articles for our Boone County Recorder. Please welcome my favorite guest, Diane Mason, to the program. Welcome, Diane. Thank you, Anna Kay. Good to see you again. Well, Diane is with our Boone County Cooperative Extension. And before we begin about her latest article, Diane, tell us a little bit about the extension in case some of our viewers may not know. The Boone County Cooperative Extension Service is the community outreach arm of the University of Kentucky and Kentucky State University. So we really serve all people trying to spread the word about the research being done at the university. Uh, so Diane, um, her latest article was preparing how to prepare for severe weather. Uh, it was last week's article, and this being the 1st of May, we do have April behind us, but we know in March and April and May, uh, seems here in Northern Kentucky, we have been prone to tornadoes. So Diane, um, let's start with our first uh, item that you would like us to have uh, stowed away for when, if, if the worst should happen. I think every home should have some type of emergency preparedness kit. And one of the first items I think of is a um, weather radio, something that will alert you to weather problems that are in the area. It has an alarm on it that will go off, and you can go and look and see what the weather alert might be. It could just be a thunderstorm, or it could be a tornado in the area. Okay, and this is called an OSHA GAN, you National go for it. Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Weather Radio, or NOAA. And you can program it for your specific area. You can program it for specific counties or specific areas. Wonderful. And so this, it, when it's plugged in, this would give us a beep in case there's an emergency approaching yes. bad weather? And it runs on batteries That's or great. it runs on electricity. And so something else you need to do is check the batteries periodically. Sure, to make sure it's going. Mm -hmm. Now you say in the article it's especially important if you're watching only cable and only the internet. Because why? They're not targeting our area? Sometimes the current, the local weather doesn't come across those stations, depending on what, what you're looking at. True, so true. A lot of apps have been developed for phones, and that's a wonderful technique, but this is great. This is Especially the in the evening. This alarm will wake you up. Oh, that, if now, a problem. And that is great because mm -hmm. there has been a lot of catastrophes now at night. Exactly. And in the night, that, that just makes everything worse when you can't see and and no one's around. Okay, uh, Diane, what, what else do you uh, prescribe for us? I didn't bring any today, but it's recommended that each house have one gallon of water per person for a three-day supply. So if you live by yourself, you need three gallons of clear, potable water available for your use in case you have to shelter in place or in case something happens that would give you drinking water and enough to where you could prepare some food. Great, great tip. Keep that maybe and then trans, uh, transfer it out maybe every six months or a year. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't just leave water sitting No, fresh in anything, anything gets sort yeah. of stale. Exactly. Okay. And it always comes in handy. We have this uh, multi-tool. It's got a knife, pliers, those types of things. In case you have to cut through or grab onto something, it would be a great little tool. We also have a couple of other tools if you have to turn off the gas supply or the water supply to your house. Number it's one, a, you, that is something you might need to know you, where to go to do that. We would, I would never think of that. Mm -hmm. And then to have a tool handy to be able to do that. That is terrific. Flashlight? Information. Flashlight, sure. Yeah. Again, it could be night. It could be night, or you might be in the basement. Yes. Or someplace or the garage where there's no light. And electricity tends to be one of the first things to go. Uh, yes. And the last, and um, up east, it took them weeks. They were out for weeks. Mm -hmm. They'd show it on the news. I felt so... We just can't imagine. You know how for a few hours mm -hmm. you're walking in the rooms, turning on the lights, of course, you know, and you can't quite, you know, get it through your head that, you know, we no longer have a, we're so used to it. Nothing's going to happen. What a, right, that nothing's going to happen. What a great, okay, great tip there. And then we also have a first aid kit, which this is a kit you could purchase or you could put together your own supplies. And you sort of know what your family, if you have young children or older, those types of things. But you need something if there's a cut or... Anything can glass, happen, anything. right? Anything mm -hmm. can happen. Glass shatters. Um, we could 
we could fall and spring something trying to get away, spring our knee. Maybe we should have an ACE bandage in there. I don't know. What do you recommend? What are some of the, let's take a look. This is probably, is this a bought one, Diane? Yes. This is a bought one, purchased. Um, so it has ACE bandages, um, alcohol wipes, anything that you can do to sanitize or clean an area, some wraps, some gauze, those types of things, tape. Mm -hmm. any, any basic first aid supplies. Wonderful, wonderful. And so and we could throw in anything else we can think of. Exactly. And, and so that is a great tip. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, paper towels, people might laugh, but paper towels and some just general dish detergent if you wanted to clean something, might take a little bit of water and, and try to clean something, clean off an area, especially before you try to do any food preparation. Yes. And then paper towels are just Oh, wonderful. paper towels are great, yes. Any time of, yes. Any time of year. Any time, we always need paper towels. And then uh, just some extra clothing for every member of the family. And it doesn't have to be fancy. You're not, you're right. not going anywhere. Just clean. <laughs> clean yes. and something that fits. Fits, so comfortable. Mm -hmm. Recommend looking at that every six months or so, and especially for children. Children grow so fast. Yes, and make sure it still fits and that we could maybe need to put them through the washer again, but mm -hmm. we want to have those stowed away. Mm -hmm. Okay, Extra Don pair of shoes, too. I've always heard where people never think about what they have on their feet, and especially at night, they may end up trying to walk across glass or... Many times I'm like barefooted that. in the house. So having Summer, we have a thongs on. In your emergency kit so that you'll have something to put on and be able to walk around a little bit with. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, Diane, no one can believe it can happen to them, but it's becoming more and more possible here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one roared through Kenton County and Piner, that, that area, and we saw the devastation from all that. So at one lady said, uh, uh, it, during Sandy was stuck in her attic for like three days, and she was afraid to come down. She was elderly. So probably our most important um, item would be water, because isn't that the thing that we can do we live uh, longer without food than we do water. Correct. Is that right? We right. must have water. And we just take water for granted, I think. So it's very important to have plenty of water stowed. Yes. And you never know when you may be rescued or somebody might come to help. Mm -hmm. Well, she was very be. bad dehydrated. That was her worst problem. And I thought, water, wow, you know, that's our, one of our main ingredients to life is water. You make a very good point. She was in her attic. We usually recommend you put your emergency kit in the basement. But if you think you may be going to the attic, that's probably where your emergency kit should be. Well, there, that was that um, was the flooding. So, of course, they went up. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about a house? Let's say we don't have a basement. Mm -hmm. uh, the, a lot of people barely made it to the tub, right. you know, when it roared, when the tornado roared through. So depending, I guess in that case, no basement, maybe in your bathroom, because maybe you'd be going for that tub right. or the closet, don't they sometimes the say closet, garage. So depending on what your setup is in your house, that's where the kit would have to be. Correct. Because these happen so fast. And I know we just think, you know, it can never happen to me, but you don't have time to think. You barely have time to get to where you need be. Uh, rather than to think, okay, now what do I need to take? Right. You know, you, you ha it needs to all be set out and thought out. You need to think about it ahead of time. That's mm -hmm. why we're calling it the emergency preparedness kit. We've thought about it. We know where it is. The whole family knows where it is. Mm -hmm. We've been versed in that and what we will do uh, if the worst happens, yes. what we will have. So what about some canned goods? You know, do we need some canned goods? It's always great to have and some. A can manual, opener. Can opener, a manual can opener, not an electric can opener, and some very basic foods. You can always eat uh, pork and beans out of the can, beef stew out of the can. There are a lot of things you can do without having to heat it. Uh, some fruit, you can always drink the fruit juice mm -hmm. that's in the can. Mm -hmm. uh, veg canned vegetables, you could drink the vegetable water. So there are a lot of things. Ju know, just keep a few cans extra on hand. Mm -hmm. in this kit and again trade them out trade them out the other thing is don't make it something your family doesn't eat normally okay like if your family doesn't usually eat beef stew they're probably not going to eat beef stew during an emergency exactly so try to think of things that your family might normally eat and that you can put into your normal food rotation yes because you know it can happen i mean you know ask the people in pine or if they thought it could never happen to them exactly but it did happen to them. And to have this whole setup, it just makes you feel more secure mm -hmm. if the worst would happen. And then I have said, I think you also mentioned in the article 
about putting our important papers and maybe our insurance, just if, if you know, the whole thing uh, went down, we would have, uh, didn't you say, in a waterproof? It would be great to have that in some type of plastic resealable bag that was waterproof. Um, just having important papers or the telephone numbers or the contact information for your insurance agent. You may not need your policy, but you may need the phone number for that person. That is... If you don't have your wallet with you or where you normally find Excellent it. advice, sure, because they would have that information. Hopefully they would what have What we need is, is to get to them. Right. Anything else you can think of, Diane? I think another thing every family needs to have is an emergency plan. Because okay. not everybody may be home if something happens. So where will you meet? Okay. Or where are you going to call? Who will you call? And generally, you may need to call somebody out of state or out of the region. Because if it's affected you, it may have affected your neighbor or your family member down the road. Right. So they may be without electricity or telephone service, too. Right. So if you can call somebody just to check in and say, I'm okay, I'm at. That's so good, yes, to, to relieve them. And we have to remember, when it has hit areas, the grocery store, that's why she's saying the pork and beans and beef stew tastes good. It can blow your store away or if it takes out their electric, it's not long for them to lose the meat, the milk, many of those items that you may think, well, if we could just get down to, you know, our local store, we'll be okay, and they could be out. Right, and ice, a lot ice, of people take ice, ice for granted. Yes, ice. So you, you we can't store ice, but just knowing that anything that we have needs to be non-perishable. Yes, as we pack up for this because uh, it's so important. If it did happen, if the worst did happen, we would be prepared. Right, and the other thing is, if you have that radio, there, there will be hopefully a little bit of warning to give you time. Most tornadoes don't just pop up instantaneously. No. They can't, but as a general rule, you may get a little bit of warning, especially if you have that radio. Especially at night, when you say it, it will wake you in the night. Mm -hmm. That's the worst time, you know, when you lay down and, and just hope, you know, the conditions are all right, and you just hope, you know, well, surely, you know, nothing will happen to us. Exactly, and that will work without the electricity. Yeah, without that, the battery, so. That is excellent, Diane. Okay. You've given us some excellent tips. Let's talk about anything upcoming at the extension, because there are wonderful programs there for us mm -hmm. to partake in. One of the great things we have, it just opened Friday, was the farmer's market. Oh, so the I love it. The farmer's market is open for the season, and it, our farmer's market, we're very fortunate, is open seven days a week. Mm -hmm. And I believe the hours are 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. until Memorial Day, and then a little bit longer hours from Memorial to Labor Day. Mm -hmm. And of course, right now, it's mostly plants, although we do have a couple of bread vendors and some. Oh, really? So we, oh, so we, we've expanded we're some. Growing. Okay, that's great to know. So that's kind of fun, and then we'll have programming there on Saturdays throughout the summer. Um, yeah. Kind of fun to do that. Yes, how nice. Mm -hmm. how and then nice. June 29th, uh, there will be the Boone County Farm Tour where people can drive themselves around to the various farm locations and see what a working farm looks like and learn about agriculture in Boone County. Mm -hmm. And those are all days, and you'll have the farms, and I think there's some kind of map or uh, yes, so leading you. Put out. So Again, that's meeting your out. local farmers. Mm -hmm. And then many of them will be at the market. So you can see it right there, you know, what they're doing. They're exactly. cultivating. Questions, right. Find out how they grow things. Right. So, yes. Um, we have a program called Healthy Earth, Healthy You, that we're doing out at our Environmental and Nature Center in Union. And we will talk about the environment. We'll talk about how to maintain a healthy lifestyle. And then we'll offer a walk. One will be about a one-mile walk, and the other will be a two-mile walk through to continue discussing how to take care of the earth. Yes, which is so important, mm -hmm. our environment. We want to keep Boone County beautiful, exactly. don't we? Don't exactly. we? But that's wonderful. It's going to be four Monday nights in June. Four Monday nights in June. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have some fun with that. And then we have another program called Eat Healthy, um, Be Active, and that's going to be out at the Environmental and Nature Center, too, and that will be uh, weight loss, healthy eating, portion control, those types of things. Okay, well, you're having a lot of programs there now. Right. That's Trying to get nice. Out and moving and move. beautiful facility. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. I've heard that. I haven't been, but I've heard that. So. Anything else you can think of? We're trying to get ready for fall. All of our classes, we're doing a lot during the summer, but 
point already you have to you, you have to already be planning always planning ahead always one season ahead aren't we, we it are. seems like well we're spring but you know you're already thinking Continue you ahead. know the fall well diane it's been wonderful having you uh didn't she give us some great tips on just if the worst should happen, how to prepare for severe weather. Uh, don't forget the tip. She says our number one item would be the water. You know, if you don't remember anything else, remember the water. So Diane, thank you for coming out and being with You're us welcome. again. It's always so great to see you. Her information will follow. All about Diane and the extension will be following right after our show. Bye now. Until next time. Be happy, keep smiling. I'll see you soon.